Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Uh, this week I'm going to work on a work in progress. This is a painting of a black cow up on Dartmoor. And I created that work in progress using some acrylic paint markers. Now I didn't actually film uh, the creation of the painting up to that, you know, that stage I just showed you. But if you remember, uh, long term viewers may remember from a few months ago, I did do a marker pen demonstration. I'm just showing you uh, uh, some quick highlights of that. So what I'm doing here is I've got this uh, chunky nibbed 15 mil nib acrylic paint marker. And using that, I was able to put down some outlines for this cow lying down and then layer on with a dry brush effect, different colors to build up you know, depth of tone and color. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to that previous video, the one that's on screen now, uh, in the description to this one. But that's the same technique I used for this particular painting here. And what I'm doing here is I'm just coming in with a light violet to finish off this stage of, of the picture. So I'm still using the acrylic paint marker. And I'm just using a light violet color to block in the sky. And using these markers, you can you know cover quite an area quite quickly. And, and you know, for that reason, they're very useful. I think it took me about 20 minutes or so to, to bring the, the, uh, the picture to the stage it is now. Um, so in some ways it's quicker than using a brush and paint because you don't have any clean up. You don't have to you know, put the paint out on your palette and stuff. But having got that first layer of color down, then what I'm gonna do is switch to using my interactive acrylic paints. And I'm using the new um, combo of colors that I've been experimenting with recently. So what I've got is some phthalo blue and I've got some permanent alizarin on the left there. And then I'm just grabbing a touch of burnt umber. And then I've got some titanium white as well. And I may use some cadmium yellow deep uh, later on. And I recently used this combination of colors uh, to finish off a pheasant painting. Uh, and I showed you that a few weeks ago. But what I'm doing up here, what I'm doing here is just mixing up a sky blue but rather than just combining blue and the white, what I've been doing is adding just a touch of the uh, alizarin and a touch of the burnt umber, just to make it a little bit more of an off blue, a little bit more of a misty gray blue. And I'm putting that over the violet. So some of that violet will show through. But the main idea of this video is to take the marker pen painting and then use the interactive acrylics over the top to kind of soften the, the transitions between tones and colors and you know, just kind of bring it to up to a finished painting, basically. So as you can see, while I was chatting away there, I've added a bit more white to the to the mix and I'm gradually lightening the sky as I come lower and lower down on the painting. And I'm being reasonably careful not to go over the drawing of the cow. But if I do go over the edges a little bit, I'm not too worried because I'll, I'll come back in with my interactive acrylics in a little bit. But this painting of a black Angus steer um, on Dartmoor, this was inspired by a cow on Dartmoor. Um, it's, a, it's a subject I keep returning to, actually. I just love the combination of colours of the dark cow against the purples and yellows and greens of, of the Dartmoor uh, landscape. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop a couple of uh, examples up on the screen later in the video of previous paintings of this subject that I've done. Uh, but what I'm doing at the moment is just putting on, so this is some phthalo blue mixed in with the cadmium yellow deep and a little bit of the alizarin. And I'm just putting a thin wash of that over some of the, the background work I've done already with the marker pen. And I tried to, although I worked from a photograph to create the original marker pen drawing, I couldn't actually, I did it some months ago and I couldn't actually find the reference photo. So I'm actually just working from memory and kind of doing a little bit of freestyle work, really, just kind of experimenting with colour and brushwork to see what I, and kind of trusting the drawing I've put down already and yeah, seeing what I can come up with. So I'm in part using the line work I've put down already and in other places I'm you know, diverging from that line work. Um, and you know, just been trying to be fairly loose with the brush. So here, this is uh, Heather Bed, 
this is a previous uh, painting of a similar subject. So that's one of my one of my personal favourites. And then this is um, a lunch interrupted, and this is one where I've used the interactive acrylics. Uh, and again, this is one of my favourites as well. But back to the current painting, I've now mixed in uh, some burnt umber and some of the phthalo blue in with that green to give me a shadow colour now. So again, keeping the brushwork nice and loose, I'm just adding some shadow areas to the foliage. And because we've got the marker pen, the acrylic marker pen underneath, you know, we're adding a lot of different layers and textures automatically by using this interactive on top of conventional acrylic approach. One of the great things with the interactive is that you can, you know, because you can dilute it to make it nice and free flowing, it's great for doing glazes and thin washes. It, it works really well. So here's another more recent uh, study of some black cows in amongst the heather. But back to our original, or back to our current painting, I should say. So you can see I'm putting the brush down at lots of different angles, tapping the brush, rolling the brush. And that's a nice way to introduce uh, an element of randomness to your mark making, which is useful when depicting plants. But uh, you know, as you can see, I'm treating the, the plants and the grass and stuff in quite an impressionist way, because what I want is the focus to be on the animal. So by keeping very, very loose brushwork on the on the on the plant life and being more precise with the cow or with the steer I should say then uh, that's a good way to keep focus on the animal. Now I just sprayed the surface of the painting with water and the conventional acrylic will be completely unaffected but what it does what that does is it lets the interactive slide very smoothly over the surface of the painting and I've mixed here I've mixed up uh, some phthalo blue and some of the alizarin crimson and I've also uh, added a touch of the burnt umber and a little bit of white, but not too much. And what I'm doing is I'm just completely coating the entire animal here. And what that will do is soften some of the transitions between shadow and light that I've put down with the acrylic paint markers, you know, in a, in a previous uh, session. And that's a really good way of working for, well, for almost any animal, really. But for if you're painting a black animal, then the highlights are generally more subdued and more subtle than they are on lighter coloured animals. So this is a nice way to achieve those subdued highlights. So what, what I'm saying is you can put the highlights in as harshly as you like and as high a contrast as you like. But if you then go over with a mid-tone wash, it automatically softens the highlights. And of course, because you've got the line work down already, it's, it's a really sort of relaxing stage of the painting, really. It's, it's, just, it's just nice. And if you're not happy with what you've done, then because we're using the interactive acrylics, I can spray that with water. And just what I'm doing here, I'm not going to remove all of it, but I could if I wanted to. I could just spray that with water and remove the interactive acrylic. But what I'm doing is I'm just lifting off some of that wash to reveal some of the highlights that I put down previously. Where, where I still want the stronger highlight. So that's a really nice you know, little approach with the, with the interactives. Um, so here's one of my, uh, another one of my personal favorites of this subject. This one's called Time for a Nap. So this one just depicts the head of the animal, you know, settled down in amongst the heather and gorse on Dartmoor. But on our current painting, what I'm doing now is I've mixed up some of the alizarin and some titanium white and I haven't mixed that too thoroughly. I've got a combination of both those colours on my brush and so I'm just putting in some highlights on this painting to depict the, the gorse. So for those of you not in the UK, uh, Dartmoor is a large national park where you can kind of just go and explore. Uh, it's in Devon and it's got really dramatic landscapes, um, very rugged landscapes but very very beautiful. So it's a combination of sort of gnarled trees and woods, rolling hills, green fields, uh, but lots of 
you know, bright wild flowers like gorse and heather, lots of rocks uh, coming up out of the grass, lots of big rocky outcrops known as tors. Uh, so people often go rock climbing up on Dartmoor. Uh, and then there's lots of animal life as well. So, you know, you get the cows wandering more or less wild. They, they have a you know, very, uh, very open field structure. You know, lots of room to explore. You've got lots of sheep, uh, horses and ponies roam, roaming wild as well. So, you know, it's a really great area to inspire paintings, basically, basically. So just adding in some more highlights here. So here's another uh, painting that I did a while ago on the channel of a similar subject. So I called this one Down in the Heather. But going back to our current painting, I'm just adding some highlights on a few blades of grass there. And then now I've added the, gone back to the cadmium yellow deep. And I'm just using the brush end on here, and it's a brush that was, you know, slight, the bristles are slightly frayed. And I've got some titanium white on the brush as well. So once again, I'm applying the paint by pressing the bristles down on the paper in a variety of directions and angles, and using the brush end on, side on, edge on, rolling the brush. It just provides a nice sense of variety. Uh, here and there as we move across the painting. I've added a bit more titanium white to one edge of the brush now and while that first application of paint is still wet I'm, I'm putting on an extra layer. So it's a really sort of nice relaxed approach to to the plant life. Just have some fun really introducing some random elements. So another spray with the water bottle across the surface of the painting, because now we're going to go in and work on the cow. And what I'm doing here is continuing to soften the transition between the shadow areas and the highlighted areas on the steer. So I've mixed up a kind of a mid, a mid bluey purple. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm dragging that from the shadow areas into the highlighted areas or vice versa but keeping in mind the brush strokes that I put down earlier in terms of direction. So this has two effects. It, as, I, as I just said it softens the transition between light and dark but also because I'm working with wet paint uh, it's adding some texture which helps to convey a sense of hair running across the body of the animal so I'm definitely keeping in mind the direction in which the hair would fall on the animal. But it's just a nice quick way of softening the effect we've, we get from the marker pen. So the marker pens are great, they're really quick for covering a large area. Here I'm working on A2 mixed media paper. And they're more, uh, more expressive than you might think because you can put down really quite narrow marks. You can obviously cover large areas quickly. You can very easily put down hard edged patches of tone and colour. But you can use the dry brush approach to uh, you know, give graduations of colour as well. And then having done that, going over the top with the interactive acrylics is a really efficient way of producing a, a finished painting in a relatively short amount of time. But back to our current painting, you can see I'm now working on the head of the steer and I've switched to my small round brush for some final details. So I just put in a couple of highlights uh, on the bottom edges of the nostrils and I've done something similar for the lower lids of the, of, the, uh, of the eyes there. Now I'm still working wet in wet because when I'm putting down the final highlights, you know, I still want a kind of soft edge to those highlights because it just brings the animal to life quite a bit more. And what I'm doing here is within the highlights I put down, I'm just putting down some little areas of even lighter paint so even more titanium white added. So we're getting a variation in tone across the highlighted region. A little bit of light blue for the highlights in the eyes. And then 
you know, even this, even the animal which is painted more precisely than the background, I want to keep it fairly loose. Um, so we're getting quite close to completion here with this one, I feel. But what I want to add is, so I'm coming in with the kind of mid-tone blue that I was using just a little while ago, and having sprayed the surface of the water, surface of the painting with water, what I'm doing now is adding some loose frayed edges to the ears. So that's kind of automatically creating a, a hairy edge to the ears. So this particular steer was looking a bit too smooth and a bit too finished and mechanical perhaps. Um, but obviously this is an animal which is walking through long grass and plants and, it, and Dartmoor is, is high ground so you know it's quite windy. Um, so typically the hair is going to be moving about on this animal at least a bit. So going around the edges of the painting, not, not, all the, not everywhere but you know selectively Backs of the back legs is a good is a good area to do. Top of the top of the hip there. Obviously the ears, which I just did, and the top of the head as well. And then um, you know down on the belly I did earlier, just in between the front legs there on the chest. So all of those areas we can just add little frayed sections to to create a, you know, an, an extra sense of texture and life. Now. My signature is already there from 2018, but I put, I'm putting a 19 on there as well, so that when I look back in years to come, that'll tell me I did this in two stages. And there's the finished painting. I think I'm going to call this one Which Way Next? But that's pretty much it for this week. Hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. And uh, please remember to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.